So I'm, I'm by training a vascular and trauma surgeon and my practice is in looking after the, the patients who are victims of injury. Um, and, that's, and, that, and that fed my interest in reducing violence and that, and that led to work I did with, at the Royal London to supporting the families and victims of interpersonal violence. That led on to work into me to help and to organise and strategise a, a, a plan for reducing violence um, within, our, within our hospital and also within, our, within, our, within the London area. Mm. And that led to a role working within, within NHS London to help coordinate that programme of work, which had the attention of the big boss, Simon Stevens, and that led to the National Clinical Director role, which I occupy now. I suppose that the idea of the Violence Reduction Programme is very simply to let people understand that violence is preventable, okay, and that we can take action to understand the victims of violence, to understand the circumstances why violence occurs, and to reduce those risk factors, to reduce violence within our community. I think, I think the most practical thing is we can reduce the actual burden of injury so we can provide excellent trauma care for the victims of violence to, to, to um, give them the best outcomes. We can also intervene with those victims of violence and their families to reduce, reduce retaliation of readmission. But more importantly, we are the arbiters of seeing people who present to us before they become violent, when they have vulnerabilities that make them more likely to be victims of crime and injury. We can intercede to identify vulnerable individuals, vulnerable children, vulnerable families, to put programs of diversion and support in place to reduce the likelihood they become involved in violence. Uh, so for, as, a, as a clinician, knife crime means injury to me. It means lives lost, it means, it means, it means broken families, it means traumatised patients and clinicians. We, we're, gonna, we're over 2,000 stabbings in London this year, we, and the majority of those occur in teenage boys, okay, who've got families and who, who looks after. We provide emergency care to those young people who are often trying quite hard to die, and the resources and emotional in, in, impact on that is huge for both our patients and our staff. We see in this unit about a, about a quarter of what we do is penetrating trauma. I think for those who are in the front line, I would say thank you, and I would say I would say it's you can you can learn a lot from listening. You can see, you can hear. This is not an environment that anybody wants to be with, and everybody in that space is traumatized. We can learn from those conversations. We can empower ourselves in the conversations, and we can work much more collaboratively. In that downtime, in that other time, speak to people, listen to their stories, understand where they're coming from. Use your personal experience, use your personal knowledge, use your local, your local skills to build a rapport, to understand the community, to be part of that community and to engage in actually understanding how and why people do what they do, so they can make better choices. For senior people, it's difficult. I know as a senior leader myself, it's hard to, to, to strategize and be operational, but visible leadership is important. Being on the front line is important for me, being an active clinician is incredibly important to understanding what and why I do it. And I think the why is very important. When I build programs, when I work with people, I have to talk from a position of authority and also integrity and authenticity. I do the work, I walk the walk, I work on the streets, and I'm here with the data. And I know all the things about my people, about my community, and about who I work with. So for me, it's incredibly important to know everything about the area I work in, everything about all the stakeholders I'm working with, and understand that we're seeing the same problem from a different lens, from a different perspective. I see it as injury, you see it as crime, people see it as social services. We all want the same thing, but we have to work collaboratively together. And the first thing to do is to understand perspectives and listen to our community.